Okay, welcome back to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Jean Showcroft from Australia. So Jean, can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure, thank you, Michael. Um, my name is Jean Showcroft and I'm president of the Australasian Association of Distance Education Schools. Um, that is an association that brings together all of the government schools who have a distance education brief, which means we are catering for those students who do not attend face-to-face -face a normal school. And I'm also um, Deputy Principal of Open Access College in South Australia, and I have been here for since 2005. Um, and we are the only education provider in South Australia that runs online learning. So totally online, our students engage with learning in a virtual online setting. Okay, very good. Now, I know in your particular state, the schools haven't been mandated to close, but in other states throughout the country, they have been. Um, if you had the opportunity to provide guidance or advice to school leaders in, in those jurisdictions that may have missed a couple of months or part of a term now at this point, um, what sort of advice would you give them in terms of how to bridge things that may have gotten lost uh, during this time of remote learning? Um, I guess one of the things that is um, critical is for everybody to know that we have to be flexible about what our expectations of learning are during this time. So um, because we are a distance ed provider and we don't have students on site from eight to four or five days a week, um, we always focus on what is the essential learnings for the students within any subject, within any, each level. So what are the critical skills, knowledge and understanding you want the students to have by the end of the year? And we focus less on what is the content that you want to cover. We actually want to know that they've got the skills and the understandings rather than having studied every post-war pandemic. We actually want to talk about you know, what are we learning from this? What have we gained from our understanding about this and how does that present us to the future? So in our learning, we are very much about not the content coverage, but what are the skills and understandings what our students to have? So what is the essential learning? And that's critical. So as a teacher, we really need to be clear about what is the outcome we want for our students? And therefore, what are the steps and the activities will get our students to that outcome? Um, not what, are, what is a range of fun activities that we can do or what is, what is the book saying around this. Um, we've really got to put that to one side and think about what is it we want our students to know, need to know, need to understand. I think that's critical um, at this time. And so therefore, how are we going to teach to make that happen? Um, I think um, one of the difficulties in our context is that our teachers are trying to teach students who are face-to-face -face in front of them at the same time as they're trying to teach students who are at home. So they're trying to juggle both online and face-to-face -face at the same time. And um, they're trying to do that in a context where they're this is new to them, so new skills for them, new skills for their students, new skills for the family and the parents as well. And I think we have to think about maybe splitting that or managing that in a different way. Um, we, we, in our context, we have for most subjects in secondary school, one lesson a week, one online lesson a week. But we flip the learning. So there's a lot of there's content that goes to the student beforehand that they're expected to do before they get to that face to face lesson. Then in that lesson, that's when we really want to know what they know, understand and can do. So when they leave the lesson, then we know that they can do the ongoing work afterwards. So again, we instead of having four or five 
hour lessons with a student, we have one face, one online lesson and the rest of the hours are spent at home um, with supervision, but not by the teacher. So again, we have to set that up very clearly for the students and for the parents to know what goes beforehand. What are we gonna do in lesson? And then what are we gonna do after the lesson? And be clear about that process. I don't think you can expect students to sit in front of a screen all day, every day. And I don't think you can expect teachers to teach in front of a screen all day, every day. It's exhausting um, and it's not productive. So you really have to think about what are you going to do in that online time and what can you get the students to do outside of that online time? And what do you need to do to prepare students and prepare yourself to make those two things work really seamlessly? And I think they're a bit, so I think they're critical. I think the other thing that's critical is being consistent, predictable and routine. So I think our messages and our communication with everybody, we need to be clear about what we're doing, why we're doing it, um, how we're doing it, and then we need to stick to it. The message needs to be really simple, really clear, and we need to not, not deviate, I guess. Um, so if I was teaching a lesson, for example, start with the greeting, do some explicit teaching, do some group work, have an end point, walk away. So the students know exactly what they're going to be faced with. Have some pre-lesson work, some post-lesson work and have expectations clear and not varied. But I think it's also um, that consistency in communication with teachers is also critical. So our teachers are at the front line it's their angst and um, frustration and concern that, that the students and the parents absorb by osmosis. So if teachers have angst, and most angst, I think, for teachers comes from not being clear, not having an understanding of what we're doing, why we're doing it, not knowing what my lesson, my day is going to look like today, not knowing what's expected of me. So as leaders, I think we need to be really clear, concise, have simple, unambiguous messages um, for teachers, for parents, for students. So everybody knows what's going on. And I think it needs to be constant, not overly constant, but, you know, regular updates. So has it changed or, you know, is it still the same? How are we going? You also need a mechanism of communication back. So I know in our context, we've got many teachers who are working from home. We've put in structures like check-ins to make sure that they're okay. Um, and I know other schools have regular surveys, just very quick, once a week, quick and dirty survey about how you're tracking, what's going on, so you can get a sense of, you know, what's the mood out there, how am I coping, um, who do I need to follow up, or do I need to make some changes? Okay. So you mentioned that, you know, we've, a lot of the teachers aren't accustomed to being in this kind of environment. And I know all around the world, a lot of our, particularly brick and mortar teachers were sort of thrown into this uh, very quickly, little training, little experience. Knowing this is a pandemic and there's likely going to be localized outbreaks that, that happen and, and potentially a second wave coming through, what can school leaders start to do now and over the coming weeks so that we're not sort of caught off guard again like we were this time? Yeah, it's a really, um, really good question. Um, it's an interesting shift. So I've known um, school leaders and schools who for years and years have encouraged teachers to work more online. So to blend their teaching and learning face-to-face -face and online. And teachers have by and large picked that up, but there's been some, you know, I'll do it my own time, I'll do it when I'm ready. This pandemic has moved people from being almost agnostic technology users to proficient technology users within a month. Um, so it's forced people, one of our leaders said, you know, it's taken four weeks to do what I would have what I would have expected two years to take me to do under normal circumstances to get my teachers au fait with. Um, so I think I actually think we need to shift our headsets a bit. Um, I think it would be really key that teachers are teaching both are teaching a blended model of education. 
So students have access to learning face to face, but we also are using technology more to provide some um, delivery of education as well. And teachers are responsible for both of that and the students have that in both ways. So that we have the benefit of, you know, if we're going to have to go one way or the other, for whatever reason, we've got experience and skill and understanding. So, and I think it's also helpful in terms of preparing people for the future. Which job now does not use technology or does not use something online? And one of our biggest issues, I think, in our society at the moment is inappropriate use of technology and social media. So the more we use it and we educate people in its intelligent use in a school setting, the better I think our use of technology across the board will be. And I think that's really critical part of it is just being familiar with it um, being comfortable with it, knowing how to use it or not use it, know when to use it, when not to use it. Use it for a purpose, not use it just because it's there. But there's another side to that, and I think um, certainly a conversation in Australia at the moment is around inequity um, because as we've moved with students to be at home and learning at home, then they need access to good internet they need access to a computer. Uh, if you've got five siblings at home, then you actually need five computers and enough internet to make it viable for those students to be able to learn online and offline at the same time. Um, so that inequity is a huge one. And I know there's been some media that's suggesting, and our government has just ignored it, that um, Government needs to ensure that every student in Australia has access to good quality internet and has access to a functioning proper internet enabled device. Um, in our school, we do that because we're an online school. So every student is given, lent, not given, but lent a laptop that we, um, we put a, an image on so we know what's on the computer. We can actually therefore help students when something goes wrong. That's what they use. Um, they have to provide their own internet, but we make sure that there's a standard operating system for them that we manage and control. And I think we have to make that something that we do well. Australia's got lots of dead spots when it comes to internet. We need to start doing something about that too, I believe. The other bit about inequity, is um, not in answer to your question, but it is an issue, I believe, that moving to totally online, moving to at-home learning with parent supervision, those parents with good education and confidence and employment are going to do a better job. They have less anxiety. Those parents who are less well-educated, unemployed, don't know when the next dollar is going to come from, they're not going to do such a good job. So. I'm, I'm off track here, I know, but it is for me a big issue in terms of how do we actually um, support that group of people who we know us not going to do so well, I guess. Um, and I don't, don't have an answer to that. And I know that in Australia, we're talking about um, situations of domestic violence increasing because of being locked away and at home. And our services for those people are now changed because we don't want our service people to be in that environment. So rethinking that whole system about how we provide services and support for the most disadvantaged, I think is a critical part of this, but I don't have an answer. Well, at least get, making people aware of it and having them start to think about it and, and potentially plan for it, at least in their local context, I think is useful. So thank you very much, Jean. So this has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With, and today our with has been Jean Showcroft.